Hi, I'm Nick with DuramaxTuner.com. Today on Diesel Insights, we're gonna jump into the Edge CTS, or basically any other gauge pack that you have on your uh, windshield. So we get a lot of questions from guys who buy the CTS asking, you know, what pids do you pull up? When do you use what gauges? Uh, I see a lot of trucks that come through the shop and have basically just the schizophrenia version of gauges on the display. So I'm gonna go ahead today and show you, you know, how I set my own up and why I do it that way. YouTube metrics tell me that my target audience is somewhere in the 40 year old range. So odds are you've been driving trucks since the 1990s or similar, which means that you've seen gauges not evolve at the rate that trucks have evolved. It's interesting to me that still as a truck driver, I have engine coolant temp, trans coolant temp, speed and RPM. Um, you know, you can toggle through some of the newer trucks and find some gauges that are mildly useful, but you know, as the complexity of this truck has evolved over the past 20, 25 years, it's my opinion that the gauge pack has not evolved. And as a result, I like to install an Edge CTS or similar on pretty much any truck I drive. So why a CTS? I like the CTS because it gives me access to basically any PID or parameter identifier that would be available on a GM scan tool. And I can toggle between which PIDs I look at at what time. So I can set up about 8 gauges or 12 gauges depending on which model CTS I have. Today we're going to be on an Edge CTS 2. There is a new version out, the CTS 3. It's nicer, it's better, it's cleaner, it's got a better backlight, whatever. But for you who <laughs> for you who've been hanging around for a while, a CTS 2 will work just fine. So how do I set up my CTS 2? Well, really it depends on what I'm doing with the truck, but primarily for daily driving and for towing, I have a, a setup that I'll share with you here. And it starts on the left side of the screen. So on the left side of the screen, I like to see the load. And when I say the load, I mean the fuel rate, the RPM, and the gear. And that gives me a really good idea of how hard the truck is working. Because basically anything that I'm gonna characterize as far as deficiencies or issues or stuff I wanna address in the tune, or stuff I want to maybe talk to my tuner about or my shop guys, I have to start with a load scenario. So we have to be consistent about the load we describe. And the only way to do that is to know what RPM the problem's happening at, what gear, and what fuel rate. That's gonna tell us really how hard the truck is working. Okay, so now we can pinpoint where we have issues or whatever based on the load and RPM scenario. Great. Now, in the center of the screen, I have what I'm curious about, and that is turbocharger performance today. So I have vane position and boost. Usually it's one of the systems of the truck that I'm curious about. It might be the fuel system, it might be the turbocharger, it might be the emission system. But on this, on this truck, I'm curious about the turbocharger. So I wanna look at the vane position, which is gonna give me a really good proxy for drive pressure, for how hard the turbocharger is working. Of course, boost pressure, right? I wanna see what the boost pressure is in the intake manifold. Um, be able to relay that to any of the turbo techs, anybody who's uh, you know curious about how, how well the turbocharger is working. Below that I have soot grams. Uh, really that's just there because I like to know uh, how full the DPF is during these tests. So uh, certainly how, how full the DPF is is going to have uh, you know, some impact on the turbocharger performance over the course of the, uh, of the performance cycle uh, through the regen. On the right hand side I have gauges that are kind of like the thermal limits for towing. Okay, so I have EGT-1. The reason I have EGT-1 is because our smart EGT back down is tied to EGT-1. So I can see, okay, as I'm towing, are we getting close to that threshold for EGT-1 to start backing the fuel rate down? And I can look at that upper right-hand corner and the upper left-hand corner, which has the fuel rate, and I can see how the fuel rate is backing down based on EGT performance. Middle, trans fluid temperature. Okay, anybody towing? working the truck hard with a load behind it's going to be curious about two two temperatures right trans fluid temperature and engine coolant temperature you might say well nick don't those gauges exist on the panel yes they do um, however i find that as i'm looking at a gauge pack i like to look at one set of gauges instead of toggle back and forth between my uh, my small gauges on my uh, dashboard and the gauges on the cts i also think it's easier to read the gauges on the cts so that's why i put them there so let's go into a scenario where I might be curious about the fuel system performance on the truck. You know, maybe I'm having a P0087 code or I'm having a situation where the truck is losing rail pressure. Maybe it's an LBZ with 160,000 miles and I'm towing heavy up a grade. Okay, so I'm gonna reach over here in my center and I'm gonna change 
you know, instead of turbocharger performance, I'm going to jump into fuel system performance. And I can do that. by grabbing fuel rail pressure. I'm gonna also grab fuel rail temperature. So those two things are gonna give me a pretty good picture of how hot the fuel is and how viscous the fuel is versus the fuel rail uh, pressure. You know, in a perfect world, I would have desired fuel rail pressure here as well. On the CTS-2 for the LML, I don't have that. And you're gonna run into that. You know, the, the CTS, like basically any monitor, is gonna have some PIDs that it has, some PIDs that it doesn't have. Um, you know, you work with what you got. Anything's better than factory, uh, and, and usually you got a pretty good line of PIDs. The newer CTS-3 has an advanced PID selection, and usually there's more PIDs on the newer CTS-3 in my experience. With the uh, fuel pressure setup now, I can see, okay, is the truck dropping fuel rail pressure under heavy load? So as I'm as I'm towing that hill, I can see it go from 29,000, and it might drop down to 28,5 or 27, 25, etc. And I might see that only at certain fuel temperatures. Right? And if I can correlate those two, and I can correlate the load from the PIDs on the left-hand side, I can really be specific about talking to anyone who I'm help who's helping me diagnose the truck. You know, is this a CP4 issue? Is this a CP3 issue if this was on an LBZ or an LMM? Um, and we can, we can make a much more educated guess as to what's going on. Especially helpful if you're in the remote diagnostics um, and you're not, you know, you know, you're not a repair shop yourself, you're trying to diagnose the thing yourself. Okay, another scenario I'd like to talk to you about is regen. So anytime the truck goes into regen on the CTS, there's a light that'll turn yellow and then green up here at the top, and that'll indicate that you're either warming up or you're in active regen. When the truck's in active regen, that's a curiosity for me. I like to see how well the emission system's performing, especially on this truck, which has 300,000 miles. So the CTS-2 allows you to toggle between two screens. I believe the CTS-3 has three screens, but there's an arrow over here and I can toggle the screen to the left and you can see on this truck I now have what I would call my regen screen as the EGT1 all the way on the left building to EGT4 on the right so you see across the top of the gauges there EGT1, EGT2, 3 and 4 and that's going to tell me how warm the catalyst is getting as the truck builds heat during regen um, on my main gauge there I have the soot grams so I'll be able to see as the truck crests 42 grams into 43 grams calls for a regen and then counts back down. I'll be able to see how far it goes down as it regens. Bottom left hand corner, these are just curiosities for me. So maybe I'm towing and I'm wondering, okay, how long has it been since my last regen? I feel like it should be about time here. Well, there's my miles since my last regen. On the right hand side bottom, I have the urea tank range. So as I'm towing, I know the truck is gonna use more urea anytime it's under heavy load. So on the bottom right hand side, I can see, okay, I have 1177 miles left till I need to put more uh, urea in the tank. My third group of guys that I want to talk to is the performance crew. And the reason I want to talk to the performance crew is that the CTS can really help make you more consistent. So a lot of guys are driving by the field, the seat of their pants, etc. As you start to make more and more passes in your vehicle, you start to get more competitive and try and get that last edge out of the truck. It's important to make consistent starts. And consistent starts usually start with a consistent load. You know, earlier we talked about being able to use the load data to help diagnose issues on the truck. Similarly, load data can be used to help make your launches more consistent. So as you're coming up to the line sled pulling or drag racing or similar, um, having the transparency of RPM, fuel rate, and boost all in one place is going to help you dial in your launch. So if last time you left at 2300 RPM and 13 pounds of boost, and the truck held and you want a 60 foot a little bit harder, you can come up to maybe 2,500 RPM and 16 pounds of boost, right? So you can make those notes in your mind as you're making more and more passes on the truck at the drag strip or going from hook to hook and saying, you know, as you go into the situation, here's the targets that I have. So you're not flying by the seat of your pants. You are more consistent. The truck is more consistent. It's going to be a stronger competition truck, you know, the more you can repeat things. We've seen how consistency can make you a better drag racer, it can make you better at diagnosing your truck, and also how you can become more intimate with how the truck is functioning while towing and while loaded, basically make you a better operator and uh, put you in a better position to diagnose any issues that you might have down the road. 
clearly there's a lot of information available on the CTS. I don't expect you to learn all of it or to go through all the PIDs. You know, maybe you like my setup, maybe you don't. Try your own setup. Switch things around, get comfortable with it. The more, you, the more information you have, the better situation you're going to be in as a driver. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'm Nick Pregnitz. Click subscribe. We'll get you information on the next ones. Oh,